Have you ever wondered if King Arthur, the legendary British leader, was a real historical figure or just a myth? This question has captivated the minds of historians, scholars and dreamers alike for centuries. The enigma of King Arthur is a tale spun from a tapestry of medieval chronicles, folklore and literature, each strand contributing to the rich yet elusive image of this legendary figure. King Arthur, the once and future king, the noble leader of the Knights of the Round Table, the wielder of the magical sword Excalibur, is a character that has been larger than life since the first tales of his exploits began to circulate. His story, deeply embedded in British culture, has been told and retold, each iteration adding another layer to the myth. The sources of Arthurian legend are as diverse as they are numerous. From the romantic narratives of courtly love in Sir Thomas Mallory's Le Mort d'Arthur, to the ancient annals of the Welsh and the Britons, to the epic poems of the Middle Ages, the figure of Arthur emerges, sometimes as a war hero, sometimes as a wise and just ruler, and at other times as a tragic figure doomed by fate. Yet, beneath the layers of myth and legend, the question remains, was King Arthur a real person? Historians have been locked in a debate over this very issue. Some argue that Arthur was a genuine historical figure, a Roman British leader who fought against the Saxon invaders in the 6th century. Others maintain that he is a purely mythical figure, a symbol of ideal kingship and heroism. So, whether you're a history buff, a lover of legends, or just someone who enjoys a good mystery, the tale of King Arthur is a fascinating journey into the past. It's a story that has survived and evolved over the centuries, reflecting the hopes, dreams and ideals of different ages. So, let's embark on a journey back in time to unravel the mystery of King Arthur. Our story begins in the tumultuous era following the collapse of Roman rule in Britain. Picture a time of upheaval and uncertainty, a land caught in the throes of a power vacuum. The 5th and 6th centuries were a period of shifting loyalties and constant conflict as old orders crumbled and new ones fought to fill the gap. As the Roman legions withdrew, they left behind a power void that was quickly filled by opportunistic invaders. From across the sea, the Saxons, fierce warriors from what is now Germany and Denmark, launched a series of invasions intent on claiming this fertile land for their own. In the midst of this chaos, a beacon of hope emerged. A figure stepped forward, one who would lead the defence against the invaders and inspire hope in a beleaguered people. This was no ordinary man, but a king, King Arthur, a name that would become synonymous with courage, leadership and the indomitable spirit of a nation. Arthur's name is linked to a key event in British history, a turning point in the Saxon invasion, the Battle of Baden. It was here that Arthur, as the legend tells us, led the Britons to a decisive victory against the Saxons, halting their advance and ushering in a period of relative peace. Yet the Arthur we know is as much a product of myth as of history. He is a hero, a warrior king, a paragon of virtue, but he is also a figure shrouded in mystery. His deeds have been immortalized in countless tales, his name etched into the annals of legend. But who was he really? Was he a man, a myth, or a bit of both? But who was Arthur really, and where did his legend come from? As we delve deeper into the story of King Arthur, we'll attempt to unravel the threads of history and myth, to discover the man behind the legend, and explore the origins of his enduring legacy. The Arthur we know today is largely the product of centuries of storytelling and cultural evolution. Over the course of time, the Arthurian legend has been shaped and reshaped each transformation adding a new layer of complexity to the tale. The figure of Arthur, once a warrior chieftain in the annals of history, was gradually transformed into a legendary king thanks to the works of medieval authors. One of the pivotal figures in this transformation was Geoffrey of Monmouth, a 12th century cleric and scholar. His seminal work, Historia Regum Britanniae, or History of the Kings of Britain, introduced Arthur as a great king who conquered much of Europe. Geoffrey's Arthur was a figure of immense power and majesty, a far cry from the obscure historical figure he might have been. Fast forward to the 15th century and we meet Sir Thomas Mallory, an English writer who further embellished the Arthurian legend. 
In his work, Le Mort Data, or The Death of Arthur, Mallory introduced key elements of the Arthurian legend that persist to this day. The round table, a symbol of unity and equality, was one such element. It was here that Arthur's knights congregated, their seats arranged in a circle to symbolize the absence of hierarchy. Each knight was equal, each voice mattered. Then we have the sword Excalibur, a symbol of divine right and kingly authority. According to the legend, only the true king could pull Excalibur from its stone, and Arthur did just that. And of course, there's the Holy Grail, the object of the ultimate quest. The Grail was a symbol of spiritual enlightenment, a divine mystery that Arthur's knights pursued with fervor. These elements, introduced and refined by authors like Geoffrey and Mallory, are what make the Arthurian legend so compelling. They give the story its sense of grandeur, its air of mystery, its timeless appeal. Yet, despite the rich tapestry of Arthurian lore, the historical reality remains elusive. So, where does the legend end and the history begin? As we delve into the quest for the historical Arthur, we are met with a myriad of theories, each more fascinating than the last. Some researchers suggest that Arthur was a Roman officer, a figure of authority and prowess, who after the fall of the Roman Empire, took it upon himself to defend Britain from invading forces. This theory paints Arthur as a beacon of hope during dark times, a man who stood tall when the structures of power crumbled around him. Others propose a different origin story. They believe Arthur was a Celtic warlord, a fierce and valiant leader who rallied his people to resist the invading Saxons. This theory is steeped in the mystique and folklore of the ancient Celts, a people known for their courage and tenacity in battle. And then there's the theory that Arthur is not one, but a composite of several figures, each contributing a thread to the rich tapestry that is the Arthurian legend. This idea suggests that the Arthur we know is an amalgamation of multiple heroic figures from different periods, their deeds and exploits woven together to create a single, larger-than-life character. But what about evidence? Well, there's plenty to consider. Archaeological discoveries have unearthed Roman artefacts bearing inscriptions that some believe allude to Arthur. Ancient texts, too, offer tantalizing hints. The Annals of Wales, a historical record from the 9th century, makes mention of a warrior king who bore a striking resemblance to our Arthur. And then there's the tantalizing discovery of a 6th century fortress at Tintagel, a place intrinsically linked with Arthurian lore. Each piece of evidence, each theory, adds a new dimension to our understanding of Arthur. And while we may never definitively prove who the real Arthur was, the quest to uncover his true identity is a captivating journey into the heart of Britain's past. The quest for the historical Arthur is a journey into the heart of Britain's past. Regardless of his historical reality, King Arthur has left an indelible mark on our culture and imagination. His tale, a tapestry woven from threads of bravery, chivalry, and the incessant pursuit of a better world, has transcended the boundaries of time, geography and language, embedding itself deep within the collective human psyche. The Arthurian legend, much like a chameleon, has adapted to the changing times, continuing to resonate with audiences across the globe. It's a story that has been told and retold countless times, each narration adding a new layer of depth, a new perspective, a new interpretation. Literature, in particular, has been a fertile ground for the Arthurian saga. From the medieval romances of Chrétien de Troyes to T.H. White's 20th century novel The Once and Future King, the legend has been immortalized in countless pages, captivating the hearts of readers, young and old. The silver screen, too, has been bewitched by Arthur's charm. From the chivalrous portrayals in Knights of the Round Table to the action-packed adventures in King Arthur, Legend of the Sword, the Arthurian legend has proven its versatility, its ability to captivate audiences in manifold ways. But perhaps the most profound influence of King Arthur can be seen in our popular culture. He's become a symbol, a beacon of hope and courage, a paragon of virtue and honor. His quest for a better world, his unwavering dedication to his people, his commitment to a code of chivalry, these are universal themes that continue to inspire us, to guide us, to remind us of our potential for greatness. 
In the end, perhaps the truth or fiction of King Arthur matters less than the timeless values he embodies. His legacy, etched in the annals of literature, film and popular culture, is a testament to the enduring power of story and myth. A testament to the human spirit's insatiable appetite for tales that inspire, challenge and transport us to a world where anything is possible.